Um, I should start again by saying welcome. I'm Tiffany Spaulding and you found me here on Life in the Wick. And this is a channel hopefully where you are going to find some motivation and inspiration as I share my stories with you and the things that I think have changed my life and um, allowed me to sort of move forward. The story today is called The Nag Shield. And it is a story, it is a life changing story that my 12 year old son taught me. And I think for those of you who have children, you probably know some of life's best lessons get learned from your children. So it's kind of crazy that kids can teach us things. Hi, Moke. Hi, Allison. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've moved my, hi, Gail. I've moved my screen so I can actually kind of take a peek at the feed. Okay, here's this story. Uh, when London, my older son was 12. So I think sixth grade, might have been seventh grade. I'm driving him to school and I was on him about his homework, right? Did you do this? Da, 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 da. Right? Kind of the standard mom thing. I got to fall. Oh, no wonder my thing is itchy. Okay. Um, it's the standard mom thing. Did you get your homework done? This, this kind of, you know, all those things, blah, blah, blah. And he sitting next to me in the car goes, mom, do you know what this is? And I'm like, no, I have no idea what that is, London. And he goes, that's my nag shield. And it, when it goes up, I can't hear a word you're saying. And I thought to myself, I'm going to pull this car over and you will see how fast I can bust through that nag shield. And for some reason, something clicked in my brain. And the next thought that passed through my head was, hang on, sister, you are getting some very, very valuable information right here, right now from this kid. And it was really a moment of awakening for me um, because it opened my eyes, not just to London, um, but to the fact that my husband doesn't like being nagged at either. No one likes being nagged at, right? There's even a Bible verse in Proverbs about, you know, it's better to live on the roof than to live with the nagging wife. I don't know the exact quote, but then that's a whole, there's like some bigger stuff there. But women have had this reputation for communicating in a nagging way, literally forever, right? Since recorded time, it kind of feels like. And why we do it, how we do it, is it learned? Do we feel like it's necessary? All of these things started like pounding through my head as I was thinking about London's nag shield and, and what was gonna happen and how, and it really was a moment when I thought, okay, my husband doesn't like to be nagged at, so I don't nag at him. Why would I, no one likes to be nagged at, especially boys, especially men. And, um, it changed the entire way I communicated with my kids in that moment. And I, I began thinking differently about communication with them and how um, I could get them to do what I wanted them to do, which uh, hopefully was going to be in their best interest and how I could also guide them um, in their relationships going forward with women and, and what their expectation could be and how they treated women. And so this one little thing, this little, the nag shield changed everything. And that's not the only communication change London has made for me. <clears throat> London is very clear. You'll, you'll meet him as he comes on a podcast. Some of you have met him but he's very clear in what, what he says. He's very, yeah, I guess clear is the right word. And so that the nag shield changed the way I asked for things or the way I talked to them about things. And so London was 12, so Max was 10. And I give that realization, that conversation, um, and, and thankfully, um, whatever it was in me that rather than pulling the car over and laying into my kid about being disrespectful and the way he talked to me and all of those things, I was able to 
shift and think, wait a minute, this really isn't him. Like maybe this isn't a good way to talk to your mom, but the value is over here in me learning something. So um, he, so it changed the way I talked to the kids in a number of ways. And, and I never, all the way through their teenage years, I never had a problem with them. Not one, they never got in trouble at school and none of that stuff. Um, but our communication changed dramatically so that I, I was able to get them to do what I thought they needed to do very, very easily. Um, and it all came from that one thing of, of not nagging. And so my, my, what I want you to come away from this with is, um, well, you could come away with it. Like, how am I talking to my, the men in my life, the boys in my life? And women don't tend to nag at other women, right? Our relationships with women are different. The way we handle women is different than the way we handle men. So maybe it's going to change the way you talk to your sons, husbands, brothers, son-in-laws, whatever they are. But I would really love to hear from you, maybe in the feed, um, under this, like if you're, I don't know if you're subscribing through Podbean or if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on the Life in the Wick blog, a comment about what happened to you that was similar in a situation where you initially kind of got your back up about something and then were able to step away from that, from that clouded vision that, um, I don't know, the right word is offense or and look into the look at the situation differently and really came out ahead with some sort of knowledge or some sort of skill set that kind of changed your life like what is your nag shield story um and and how did it all come about and I, i'd love for you guys to share that in the comments if you're watching this later um i'm gonna put on my glasses and read some comments now and see if anybody's you know had that same sort of thing um uh, somebody on Facebook says off topic, but watching the wildflowers, is it affecting your area? It's, um, not affecting my area directly. Like in terms of, are there fires? I mean, are there fires where I live, but the entire, all the, the mountain range around my house is almost invisible. Like usually from my yard, I can see forever into the mountains. And right now it's almost like they're in a really serious fog. So in that way, um, it is affecting us. So yes, they're kind of crazy. Um, uh, uh, Leslie says, Oh, I have the same watch. And yes, I used to nag and choose to stop as much as possible, which is also a great point that, you know, all of us, as much as possible, like all of us do things that and say things that we in hindsight think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Sometimes a little nagging needs to happen, right? I think there's times when nagging is good. Cindy says, I love London. Um, okay. I have two adult boys too. Uh, hi, Ellen. I'm trying to keep up here with what's going on in the little feed. So that's what I want to hear from you. I want, if you will comment, if you're watching this live, you can comment here. You can pop on over to life in the wick blog, which is just life in the wick.com. I'll put this up as a blog post a little bit later in the day. I'm also trying to write up everything that I talk about and have it printable. So if there's something particular that you think, Oh, this is kind of relevant to my life. I'm going to take some inspiration or motivation, or I want to rethink this or I'm trying to type everything up so you can actually print the podcast or at least the gist of it. Uh, or download it onto your computer and keep the reference to that. And then, of course, if you just want to listen in, it's on Podbean. But um, so that's that's it. That's all I really wanted to say today was um, what has happened, or maybe maybe nothing like that has happened to you. And now going forward in your life, you might be able to take a step back when you wouldn't have and think, okay, how is this a nag shield moment, right? How, how is this moment in my life um, gonna change things if I step back from it and rethink it? Another thing <laughs> London used to say to me, or did say to me, um, was, hey, mom, 
you don't have to invite, you don't have to attend every argument that you're invited to. And that was also really, really valuable. It's funny the things that play through our heads, right? Like over and over again, that just keep popping up um, in life that give you enough pause. And for those of you who followed me as Totally Tiffany, and we talk about organization, there's so many things that just cross over all the way through life. So when I talk about organization, when I'm talking about organization, I'm talking about shopping with intention. And that lecture mostly is talking about giving your brain a chance to stop and then think, right? Which sounds like that's what we always do, but it's not true. We just keep acting on things rather than stopping and thinking. So <clears throat> when I talk about shopping with intention, giving your brain that pause, this is the same thing, the same concept of, wait a minute, I want to lay into my kid. I can't believe he's speaking to me like that. And then taking a deep breath and thinking, what can I learn here? And how can I change what I'm doing to make this a better situation or to change our lives, our communication for the better? So if nothing like that has happened to you yet, I hope that this short little blog post or podcast or however you're listening to it will give you pause the next time something happens so that you can step outside of the situation and say, okay, before I react to this, is there something different, a different way that I can take a, something I can take away and change the way I move forward with my life and getting things done and all that stuff. Okay. So, uh, Cindy Southern says, I used to stomp around and clean loudly while my husband sat there watching sports a couple of years into our marriage. He said, <coughs> you know, if you just ask me for help, I'd be happy to help. Since then, I simply ask, and he hops right up. Over the years, he started helping, even without me asking, vinegar or honey. <coughs> that is a great story. And a common story. I um, have more than one friend who has done that exact same thing, like pounding around cleaning because they're annoyed that their significant other is not helping. And it seems like that that is it, right? You just, you have to ask, which is another podcast that'll be coming up. Um, just asking like, how do we ask for things and, and how does that change our life? And we've learned to ask for things. <laughs> There's a great comedian who met and men don't think like we do, right? They don't, I, I have a, a good friend, Kate Day. And when she first started dating her husband, he said to her, um, Hey, Kate, women are complicated. Men are simple. Just ask me for what you need and I'll do my best to provide it for you. I'm kind of paraphrasing there, but right. That is, that's it. Men are simple. And when you communicate with them, what you need, men are somewhat programmed to do that, to provide and protect. And so, but they just can't figure out what needs to get done on their, on their own. This is kind of a crazy thing, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not ranking on men. I adore my husband. I think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I love my boys, but they're different, right? Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. I know I, that's an old, old book, but um, Moke says her sons are 28 and 30. London has some great statements. I would over nag at times. However, sometimes a little nagging is okay. I used to try and keep the number of topics to three to remind or nag. Anything over that was over nagging. Great term for it. Yo, I'm glad you brought that up. I also got a piece of advice from, um, uh, I don't remember, someone that I was talking to, and they said, um, you know, if you, instead of saying, don't forget your homework, um, if you change that don't to something positive, remember your homework, instead of, it has a different um, effect on people, right? Dropping the word don't and switching it with something that's more of, more of a positive word, people hear it better. Everybody hears it, women, men, whoever. It's easier and it feels more kind when someone says to you, remember your homework versus don't forget your homework, right? kind of two different styles. So I had forgotten about that little conversation. It was pretty helpful as well in, in, 
and things that I've learned. I have a little book of all of these little life lessons that I've learned from kids and from people that I've met in the world, um, which is somewhat the foundation for what's what for this podcast, for this blog, if you will. Let's see, what else do we have to say? Uh, Allison says, I asked my hubby to help. He says, okay. And by the time he gets around to it, I've already done it myself. Um, that is another thing I learned from London. Uh, well, <laughs> two things, I guess, two things. First, um, I used to ask London to do things. Will you take out the garbage? And he said to me, he's probably 13 or 14. And he says, mom, why do you phrase things as a question? He said, why don't you just tell me, London, take out the garbage or London, please take out the garbage. And it was interesting because he would rather, and this goes back to that guy thing, right? He would rather know clearly, my expectation is you're going to take out the garbage rather than me trying to be nicer, I guess, by asking, he'd say, that doesn't really do any good, mom, because I know that what you're doing, what you're saying to me is take out the garbage. So it doesn't do any good to add all that other stuff because it leaves a gray area. London does not like gray area. So, which is interesting because he loves philosophy, but that kind of stuff, he just wants to know what it is. And even more specifically to that, I got better results when I said to either of the boys, you need to take out the garbage in the next five minutes, or you need to take out the garbage before you go to bed, or you need to take out the garbage before you go to school. And it was interesting to me because um, I, by asking, I was trying to be kinder, but by telling that was better for them, right? They, they would rather be told what to do than to leave this um, wide open space. And it was funny because my husband was sitting on the couch one night and I said, um, Max, will you take out the garbage? And he said, sure. And Park, who was raised in the South, and then I walked out of the room and then Park said, get up and take out the garbage. And Max said, she didn't tell me how to take it out right now. And Park said, well, you know, when your mom asks you to do something, you get up and do it. And it was interesting because that also fed into that whole scenario of here I was sort of annoying my husband that my son wasn't doing something. And not that it was a big thing. It was a tiny little thing. And probably none of them remember it. But I could have um, changed my husband's reaction by also saying to my son, you need to take out the garbage before you go to bed, or you need to take out the garbage in the next 30 minutes, or Max, can you get up from the, Max, or get up, I guess is what they prefer, get up from the couch and take out the garbage right now. Um, so it's an interesting, communication is an interesting thing and taking that opportunity to really think about what you're saying and how you're saying it and how it's being perceived by the other side is kind of a something that we're, we're not good at and that, that we're not practiced at and having those conversations, which um, a blessing to me that my older son sort of set the path for that, especially with my younger son by being able to talk to me about those things and bring things up. And, and um, yeah, I've learned, oh my gosh, I learned so much from those two guys. They cracked me up. All right. April says, when my son was in preschool, there was a girl he had friction with. He said they would grr back and forth and get mad. I told him to try to bounce a smile and change that pattern of upset. Same, right? Communicating. How are you communicating? It's your body. It's your face. It's your words. And having that thought process and teaching our young kids you know, it's, it, it's sad that the ability to have a conversation and exchange ideas um, right now is difficult uh, for a number of reasons. But it's such a skill set um, to be able to do that and to be able to take information from somebody, step back from that, and then just think about it. Like, 
how did that happen today? How could it have been different? Or how am I going to respond later? If you kind of just let something go, all of that kind of feeds into letting things go kind of feeds into the resentment factor of life. And do you want to do that? Cause it's really, really bad for you to harbor resentment. It makes life difficult and causes all sorts of hate and discontent and malevolence and all that stuff. So anyway, okay. Uh, Oh, Diane says she only has to ask for something and then for the garage key and then her husband will take over from there. Um, so there are, uh, I'm, I'm on a little rant about men um, and, and how, how different they are. You know, letting the men in your life do the things like she's saying that make them feel good and that they're providing, protecting whatever their natural instincts are, um, is really important. And I think sometimes as women, um, we forget that. Um, I, I had a situation where I got a new painting and I was with a girlfriend, Park was out of town and she was like, we could hang that. We could hang, let's get a ladder. Let's hang that. And I said, you know, um, that's not my job. That's Park's job. And, um, he does it well. And I don't want that job. I don't want I, I can I can hang a painting, obviously it's not, but I don't want to be responsible for that. I like the fact that he does it and he does it well. And he probably is more annoyed with me for being like, mm, that's an inch too hot. Mm, that's an inch too low. Any of the, you know, those left, right, whatever. But I think it's important to recognize there are jobs, whatever they are in relationships, I guess in any direction that, um, I love that he does that it's value to me and it's value. Like he likes, like her husband, he likes to do things for me. That doesn't mean he doesn't fuss about it or grumble about it or whatever. But, um, ultimately he loves to be able to do things for me. So, and I, for him. So, all right, that's a whole nother podcast too. See, I could just talk and talk and talk. That's probably my downside, right? All right, my friends. Um, Shauna uh, Kirschbaum says, try not to use you statements. It puts people on the defense right away. That is also true. Kim Rice says, I'm also accused of nagging when asking that thing that my things are to be respected when they use or bar them. I feel it's boundaries, not nagging. Um, sorry, I just lost the thing here. So that was Kim Rice. I feel it's boundaries, not nagging. Okay, Kim. This is excellent. I'm so excited. The perception from their side is that you're nagging, right? I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. And um, from your side, it isn't nagging. It, it is respect. You, you took something of mine. I'm okay with you using it. You just need to put it back when you're done. Put it back the way you found it. Those kinds of things. Um, I remember this when my mom was a kid and we used to get her sewing scissors. And she used to be like, ah, don't cut my, don't cut paper with my sewing scissors. And then we'd look, well, obviously not put them back. We were kids. We we're not. And then we get in trouble for that, whatever, but kind of the same thing. So here's your challenge, Kim. How do you, and I hope you'll post back up after you think through this, the perception from them is different than the intention from you, right? For you, it's respect and boundaries. And for them, it's nagging. And so to think through that in terms of how, what does that mean in the way you're communicating and in the way you're perceiving how they're communicating? Like that's the complicated factor, right? Is I am talking about respect and boundaries and you think I'm nagging. Why is that? Um, and I'm not saying you're right or they're right. But this is a perfect, this is a perfect example of the nag shield. Like, how do I, what's happening? I'm telling them about respect and boundaries. They're throwing up a nag shield and they're not hearing what I say. So how do I get them to not throw up the nag shield? What can I do to communicate differently? So the nag shield is not going up. I'm getting the respect and boundaries that I want 
um, and they are hearing me because it doesn't matter what your motivation is, respect and boundaries. If they aren't hearing you, it doesn't matter what you say. So, and that, that's a perfect, thank you so much for sharing that. That is a perfect example of what I'm talking about and what I'm asking you to post in the feed or over on the blog. And I make, if you don't mind, sort of copy some of these from the feed here and put them into the blog post because giving people real world examples like what you're saying um, is really, really valuable because it's so hard. One of the biggest challenges people have is taking a situation and then finding something and finding out how it applies in their world, right? How do I take this information and tweak it a little bit or change it to make it apply to the situation that I'm in right now or a potential situation or something like that? So I hope, I really hope that you will think that through and say, okay, here are three things. We talked about this last week. Um, you know, choosing your life. And one of those things is responsibility. And uh, people don't like this. It makes them angry when I say this. So any of you who are kind of starting to get your little bit like that, I want you to think you, you can take responsibility for this situation and solve it. Or you can continue to be annoyed that you're not getting what you want, right? The only person that can fix this little piece of your life and whether it's Kim's story or your similar story is you. And that means you have to step outside of what you do and how you're doing it and do something different because you're not getting the result that you want. So I hope in the next week, and maybe I'll try to put up some social media posts. So if you're following me on Instagram, life in the wick on Instagram or life in the wick on Facebook, I'll try to put up some more prompts over the week so we can share these kind of stories and, um, yeah, it, it's so valuable to share your situation um, because taking a simple principle like the Nag Shield and figuring out how it works into your life and how it can make your life better is sometimes better when other people have real world experiences to share that are very relatable. So thank you so much, Kim, for sharing that um, as well. That, that was awesome. Yay. Uh, uh, Christina says, OMG, the sewing scissors on paper, mom, rest in heaven. You know, it's funny because, um, that was, there was two things that might that used to make my mom really unhappy with us. One was the scissors, right? And she, we didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid. So she had these real, really nice sewing scissors that she used to take and get sharpened. She sewed, she made lots of our clothes and she had all kinds of things around the house. That was back when sewing was less expensive than buying things, right? Like now it's the opposite, but, um, they were something that she had invested in and, and not having a lot of money. It was a big expense and she took really good care of them. And in hindsight, as an adult, I can see all of that. But as a kid, you don't realize that. It was the scissors and her hairbrush. She had a, I don't know why we wanted to always use her hairbrush, my sister and I, but that was the other thing that we were constantly like going in her bathroom and getting her hairbrush. And then of course, you know, we we're kids. We didn't put it away. Like, like Kim is saying, like put my stuff back. I don't care if you use it, but put it back. So interesting, crazy things that we carry forward. And that is probably true. The sewing scissors for lots of us. Um, and, oh, um, because that was a, a big deal back in the day, right? Uh, Stephanie Knight says, I often say to my husband, Bob, it would make me so happy if you can take out the garbage this evening, which is um, also a great way to phrase things. So thank you for sh sharing that because it is true that the people in our lives for the most part, especially the men, I don't have daughters, so I, I can't speak to, I mean, I am a daughter obviously, but I can't speak to that from a parenting perspective. Um, but the, their, their goal generally is to make the women in their lives happy. And um, so that's a great way to do it. It would make me so happy if, Park, there's a couple things on Park's honeydew list then I may try that. I'll let you know how that works out. It would make me so happy if you would do X today. Okay, I'm going to test that out myself. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm really enjoying this format and sharing some of my life stories with you, some of the things that motivate 
and inspire me. I'm looking forward to reading your posts and getting your feedback. So please, if you haven't signed up to follow me on YouTube or Instagram or on Facebook at Life in the Wick, I would love to have you along for this journey. So like, subscribe, follow, click the bell, do all the things and come along with me on my journey through Life in the Wick. Take care, everybody.